Today we are going to look at transformations of functions. A transformation occurs when the graph of the function is moved from its original position. As an example of a function being transformed, we will look at the graph of y equals x cubed. This is the graph of x cubed. It starts out down here at negative infinity, increases, then levels off around the origin, and then keeps on increasing to positive infinity. So this is our basic graph, what we call a parent function, but we can also transform this graph from in its original position. We can move it left, right, up or down, we can stretch it, we can shrink it, we can reflect it. And the way we can do that is by changing the parameters of the equation. So I, here I have the template equation for x cubed, f of x equals a times b x plus h cubed plus k. And this, these letters, a, b, h, and k, are the parameters. And if we change those letters, we can move the graph around from its original position. I don't really know why we use the letters a, b, h, and k, but that's sort of what's done. So what I have here is the graph with its sort of default values filled in. a is 1, b is 1, h and k being very close to 0. And by changing these values, we can shift the graph. So I'm going to start off by shifting k. I'll move this value of k in the slider down here, and that will change it in the equation up here, which will also change it in the graph. I'm going to start out making k more and more positive. And as I do that, what's happening? The graph is moving up. And when I move k out to 3, how high up has the graph moved? It's moved up three units from where it started. The leveling out point was originally at zero, zero. You can see the original in this black. And the red is my transform graph, which has been moved up three from where I started. It's been moved up three along the y-axis. What's going to happen if I make k negative? Let's try it. We'll move it back down. And I'll make k negative one. And we see there the graph has moved down one unit along the y-axis. So shifting k, this number way out here on the outside of the graph, that transforms the graph up and down. It moves it along the y-axis. Now I'm going to set k back down to 0. And now I'm going to see what happens if I moved h. When I moved k, which is on the very outside of the equation, it moved it up and down along the y-axis. If I move h, which is right here, right next to the x, what do you think will happen when I move change that value? So let's try making h positive. What direction do you think it'll go in? So I'll make h positive 2. And we see that moved it along the x-axis, because it's right near x, but it actually moved it to the left. When I made this h plus 2, it moved the graph to the left 2. Might be kind of the opposite of what you expected. So what would happen if I make h negative? Move h back. See, now h is negative 1. When it's negative, now I've moved it to the right 1. So when h is negative, it moves it to the right. Along the x-axis, when h is positive, it moves it to the left along the x-axis. So we saw that moving h and k, these numbers that were added to the equation, produced what are called shifts that move the graph left, right, up, or down. k, which was on the outside of the, gra outside of the equation, moved the graph along the y-axis. And h, which is right next to h, moved the graph along the x-axis. So now we'll take a look at the numbers a and b, which are multiplied in the equation. We'll start with a, which is on the very outside of the equation. So if k, which was on the outside, moved things along the y-axis, what do you think will happen to a? What do you think a? What kind of effect do you think a will have? But let's try making a more and more positive. I'll pull it up here. And what's happening? So as I make a bigger, the graph is kind of being stretched along the y-axis. Every point here, the point here, which is originally at 1, is moved up to being at 4. It got stretched by a factor of 4 here. See what happens when I make a to be less than 1? So let's see here. a 
is down here. It's still changing the graph along the y-axis, but now it's shrinking the graph. You can think of it as kind of being pushed down. This point here is moved down here. This point here is moved down here. So when a is less than 1, I shrunk the graph along the y-axis. Let's see what happens when I make a negative. What do you think would happen there? Let's take a look. Whoa. Let's catch that again. Ooh. Right when I made a negative, the graph sort of switched directions. This part, he the graph which is increasing here is now decreasing. Here it was negative, it's now positive. So this is called a reflection. When I change the direction in which the graph is going, this part here got reflected down here. This part here was reflected up here. So when I make A negative, it reflects the graph. But it's still reflecting it along the y-axis. This part here just got pushed down. Set A back to 1 and take a look at our final parameter, B. We saw that when we changed A, which is the factor that was multiplied on the outside, it stretched the graph along the y-axis. If we change B, the factor that's multiplied, by, that's multiplied by x, how do you think that'll change the graph? So it'll probably stretch it along the x-axis. Let's see what happens when we make B bigger. So I'll bring B out to 3. And it looks like this time it didn't stretch it along the x-axis, it actually shrunk it along the x-axis. So when I made b bigger, it shrunk it along the x-axis. If I make b less than 1, see what happens then? So now with b being less than 1, now it's stretching it along the x-axis. So it's kind of the opposite of what happened with A. When A, when we made A bigger, it stretched it along the y-axis, and when we made A smaller than 1, it shrunk it. With B, it's the reverse. Kind of just like when we looked at H and K. When we made this outside number positive, it moved it up, but when we made the inside number positive, it moved it left, even though we might have guessed it would move it right. So just like the ones that the parameters that are right next to the X, the B and the K, maybe do the opposite of what you might think. So let's see what happens now. There's one last thing to check. Let's see what happens when we make B negative. Let's move it down there. Ooh, that's pretty cool to look at. Look at it once more. And just like with A, when we make B negative, it reflects it along the x-axis here. So this part that was originally positive became negative over here, and this part that was originally negative on the x-axis became positive on the x-axis. So let's just take a final look at what happens when we change all these parameters and how they change the graph. It, graph, if we move k, the number that's outside along the graph, that shifts the graph vertically. It moves it up and down the y-axis. Adding k moves it up. Subtracting a number moves it down. When we look at h, the number that's added right to next to the x, that also moves the graph this time it moves it left and right, and here it's kind of maybe the opposite of what you expect. When you add the number, it shifts the graph to the left. When you subtract it, it shifts the graph to the right. We'll also take a look at these numbers that are multiplied. When we multiply A, the number on the outside, that stretches it along the y-axis. When A is less than 1, it'll shrink it along the y-axis. And when we make A negative, it reflects it. We'll set that back to 1 and take a final look at our last parameter, b. This one is multiplied by the x, so this stretches and shrinks along the x-axis. But here, if you make b bigger than 1, it shrinks it along the x-axis. If you make b less than 1, then it stretches it. And again, when we make b negative, it reflects it.